Who here uses Apache Kafka in their, uh, in their applications? Raise your hand. OK, so I see about maybe 75% of the room, right? The reality is Kafka is everywhere, right? Kafka has become a critical component in streaming architectures. Um, take a look at Timothy and his trucking application and so forth. So let's take a glimpse of what this architecture looks like. I'm going to walk through what a reference architecture that we see here is. Okay, And if you heard the keynote this morning, um, Brian Hopkins of Forrester said, add the edge. And that's where this architecture starts. It starts at the edge, and we'll stick with the theme of trucks, just because I followed up Timothy here, is where we see Apache minified, deployed at the edge, collecting data from the telematic panels, from the sensors, from the trucks. These agents then send the data to these IoT ingress gateways. And these typically, these gateways are powered by Kafka. So as you notice here, you have maybe the US West fleet sending data to one topic. You've got maybe the North Central fleet sending data to another topic and so forth. Okay. Next, we see things like Apache NiFi consume those streams of events from those IoT ingress gateways, routes, filters, transforms, enriches, and delivers that to a set of what we call syndication services. More and more customers are setting up these syndication services. What is that? So syndication services are these syndicated topics where you have normalized views of your streaming data that is easier to consume by your downstream applications. Right? And at this point, you've got now your subscribing streaming analytical applications. So as an organization, maybe I'm a Spark shop. I might be writing Spark streaming applications. I'm consuming from the syndicate service. Right? Maybe I'm using things like Streaming Analytics Manager where I don't need to write a lot of code. I'm consuming from there. Maybe I'm a Kafka stream shop or an Apache Flink shop. Right? Or maybe I'm in the cl cloud and using one of the cloud services. Right? But the common pattern that you see is Kafka is everywhere. Right? It starts at the edge producing data to the IoT ingress gateways, to the data movement, and all the way to the streaming analytics. Right? And what we're seeing is this omnipresence of Kafka. Kafka being everywhere, it's leading to what we call the Kafka blindness. So let me quickly talk through what Kafka blindness is, who gets affected, and what the symptoms are. Simply put, Kafka blindness is the fact because Kafka has become so popular, right, and it's becoming deployed more and more throughout the enterprise, it's a struggle to monitor, struggle to troubleshoot, struggle to see what's going on inside the cluster. That's what the Kafka blindness is, right? And what we're seeing as we're talking to different customers and users and talking to the community is that it's not just one team or one person, right? Platform operations teams gets affected by this ailment. Developer DevOps teams gets affected. Security and governance teams, right? And some of the symptoms of this ailment for these teams are things like, hey, I have no idea who's producing data, who's consuming data from these Kafka topics, right? I don't understand how data flows, right? I may have had four different business units all creating their own applications, own Kafka topics, own producers and consumers, and I have no idea how data flows throughout my system. And it's a painful nightmare to troubleshoot and monitoring when I've got brokers going down or my, my applications are telling me that they're slow. And if you think about what organizations and users in the community use today, and some of this might be very familiar to you, right? You use the stuff in the Kafka bin directory, which is a bunch of shell scripts that you use to figure out consumer offsets and so forth. Maybe you use various open source utilities, right? I've got a number of customers that use things like Yahoo Kafka Manager, right? Even though it can't connect to a secure Kerberized cluster, right? They still use it because there's nothing else, right? Maybe it's proprietary solutions that give you vendor lock-in, right? But the reality is a lot of users and organizations build homegrown solutions because there is no one single tool that allows them to answer the questions that the platform team, the DevOps teams, and so forth need to answer. So with that said, I'm really excited to announce that over the last eight months, Hortonworks has taken on this problem, right? And they've been essentially building a tool, right, that's soon to be open source that solves this problem. And the name of that tool is the Hortonworks Streams Messaging Manager, 
right? And so think of this as it's an open source tool that we'll get more details about uh, in terms of the community involvement, but it's purely aimed at curing that blindness. <clears throat> and kind of the design principle is a single dashboard across the four key entities of any Kafka system, producers, topics, brokers, and consumers, and having a single view into that. And a great way to think about the capabilities of this new tech is really from the lens of two teams, the platform operations team and the app dev team. So if you think about from a platform operations team, right, some of the questions. I want to know who are all the active producers and consumers across my Kafka cluster, right? I want to know of those producers who's sending the most amount of data over the last six hours that might be taken down my broker. What's my hot broker at the, at the moment? On that broker, what are the topic partitions on it? Various questions that are really specific to that platform operations team, right? And then you've got your app dev and DevOps teams, right? I want to understand, hey, I don't care about other teams' topics and producers and consumers. I want to know specifically for my applications, what are the producers and consumers and topics of interest? I want to know what the hottest topic is over the last couple of hours, over the last couple of weeks, right? I want to know why my consumers are, are lagging behind. How many instances of my consumers are in my consumer group, right? So various questions across these two different teams. So with that said, let's actually dive in and see how SMM can answer some of these questions. All right. So what you're seeing here is the dashboard into SMM, Streams Messaging Manager. So the first thing you see here is selecting the cluster, right? Most organizations don't have just one Kafka cluster. They've got different pockets of Kafka clusters spread throughout the organization. So SMM solves the problem where it can essentially connect one SMM instance or can connect to the different clusters that you have within your organization. So I'm going to pick the prod truck streaming analytics cluster. And when I select that cluster, I want to immediately know the KPMs or the key performance metrics associated with that cluster across four entities, producers, brokers, topics, and consumers. So in this case, this cluster, the prod trucks, has 75 producers that I can filter on. It's a five broker cluster. I've got 26 topics that have been created in this particular cluster and 20 consumer groups. Okay? So those are the key entities, key KPMs on the top. On the left-hand side, you see producers, all the list of producers. The middle section has things around topics and brokers, and the right-hand side, consumer groups. Right? That's how you think about Kafka. Producers sending data to brokers and topics, consumers consuming that. Right? As a platform team, a question that I want to answer is typically, hey, what are active versus passive producers? Right? So I might have a bunch of producers that are connected to a broker that might not be sending data. Right? So this tool essentially allows you to differentiate between active and passive. So right now, I've got 75 active. I've got no passive ones. Another common question that a platform operations team might say is, hey, over the last, let's say, 24 hours, which of my producers has sent the most amount of data to um, any of the topics? So I'm going to change this interval to, say, last 24 hours. And then I'm going to filter on messages and I see this particular Kafka producer called Geocritical Event has sent over 700,000 messages um, to one of these Kafka topics over the last 24 hours. Very quickly being able to get that information. Let's switch over to the consumer group side, right? So same concept. I want, I want the ability to figure out, hey, what are the active consumer groups? And what are the ones that are passive? So I have this option of being able to essentially switch between passive. I've got three passive, which means they're connected to the Kafka clusters, but they're not essentially consuming any data because there's no, there's no, there's no data that's been added based on the offsets. Right? And then I've got 17 active um, consumers. Right? So a common question from a platform perspective might be, hey, um, how much, uh, what's the greatest lag? in terms of these particular. So which of these consumers have the greatest log? So I can essentially filter down and see I have this particular micro alert service that has a lag of 32 million events, which means that across all the consumers in the consumer group, it has that amount of that lag. Okay? So 
as a platform operations, the stuff I see in the middle with topics is interesting, but as a platform guy, I'm more interested in brokers. So I'm gonna switch to the brokers view, and I see the list of brokers, I see the hosts that they're located on, I see the throughput messages in and so forth. And so maybe what I wanna say is, hey, which of my brokers are hot, reaching the most amount of messages coming in or throughput over the last 24 hours? So I'm gonna filter on messages in. So I got 6.6 6 .6 million events into this particular broker. I've got things like 17 partitions on that broker. Another key question, I'm curious to know what topic partitions are located on this broker. So I can expand out and I can actually see all the topic partitions that exist within that broker, right? Another common question could be, hey, which of these topic partitions are the largest, right? So if I scroll in here, I see this one that has a supply chain that has 30 megabytes over the last 24 hours. Another common question is, hey, which producers are sending data to this particular broker, to this particular partition? I can click on that and I can actually see the producers actually sending data to that particular broker itself, right? Very easy to be able to identify that kind of information, right? So let me change the lens, right? So all these questions I've been asking is from the perspective of a platform operations guy. I'm gonna now talk about, put on the hat of an app dev guy. As an app dev guy, I don't care about all of these topics and producers and consumers. I'm only interested in the producers and customers that are associated with my application. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna search for topics, I'm gonna to search for gateway, all the gateway, to gateway IoT ingress topics. I've got four, and now I've filtered down the topics. Notice what happened, and this is one of the most powerful features of SMM. The four topics that I filtered down, it automatically filtered the producers and the consumers, right? It automatically filtered the view that says, hey, you're interested in these four topics, I'm gonna to only show you the producers that are sending data to those topics and the consumers consuming data from it, right? Very cool to quickly filter out. So one common question that I might ask is which, of my hot, which are the hottest topics that I have? So I'm gonna filter on data in and I see this one gigabyte, this particular uh, Gateway Europe raw sensors and I wanna say okay, I wanna see how the topic partitions are laid out across the brokers and I wanna say okay, for this particular topic, show me all of the producers sending data to it. So I can click on the partitions and I actually see all of the producer applications sending data to that topic over a given period of time. And notice something interesting here. There's a bunch of producers sending data to it. There's not one consumer group right now listening to it. And that could be a potential problem, right? It's a question of why aren't there any consumers and so forth, right? So let's actually pick a topic where you've got um, actually consumers. So I'm gonna pick this Gateway West, and I notice here, I immediately see another problem, right? So this Gateway has four partitions. Two of those four partitions don't have any data. That immediately recognizes SKUs in terms of your partition layout. That means that your keys that you're using to store those Kafka messages are not right, and the fact that the key represents what partition it goes on, right? So I'm gonna click in here and figure out all my, I'm gonna filter this, and I see all of my Minify truck that's sending data to this particular uh, topic, and then all the consumers, right? Another common question to AppDev, DevOps guy, and I hear this all the time is, wouldn't it be great to actually see what's in this topic? Right, just like a database. SMM solves that. So SMM, you can go into the detail view, go to the data explorer view, and I can essentially now look inside the topic and sample the data inside, right? So I can search by offsets, um, I can search by um, partitions and so forth, okay? So one other thing here, so I see this consumer that I've got a NiFi consumer, right? And as an app dev guy, it's like awesome. I know I've got a consumer application consuming data from this topic, but wouldn't it be really cool if I knew what this NiFi flow was doing? was what it was doing with the data it consumed. And we're able to do this with SMM because we've integrated this with Apache Atlas. So what you can do is you can click on the Atlas link with respect to this topic. And now I can actually see, if I zoom in here, this is the topic that I just, have the, that I just queried for from SMM 
And what I'm seeing here is the actual NiFi flow of that consumer application. And if I follow that NiFi flow through, what it tells me is this NiFi Plu, after it consumes it from the gateway, sends it to this other Kafka topic, Syndicate Geo event, right? And I can then use that topic to actually search with an SMM. And here's that topic. And I can see how the data flows. So imagine what we just did, right? We're able to track the data all the way from the edge to the ingress gateway Kafka topic. NiFi picked it up. We are able to figure out what that NiFi flow did because of the Atlas integration. And because of that, we were able to say it pushed the data into the syndicate topic. And then I've got a couple of uh, streaming analytical applications. I've got a Spark streaming job, a Flink job, and a Kafka streams job that are essentially consuming from that. So hopefully that gives you a view of a glimpse of how SMM can address this Kafka blindness. That was awesome.